Let's begin this hour, though, with the big moves we are seeing in the markets. And it is really about the tech rebound. Uh, looking at some of the biggest movers on the Dow right now, Intel, Apple, Microsoft, Salesforce, all up well over 2% right now. I want to bring in Chris Mack. He's a portfolio manager at Harding Lovner's Global Equity Fund. And Chris, uh, you know, the big question here is, is this the end of the tech route? Is the market taking a pause? Uh, is there more pain to come? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's you know challenging to always time the bottom, right? I think there's if everyone could do that, uh, that would be ideal. But I think you have to be prepared to look through the long term. And we're focused when we invest in technology companies. Uh, we're looking at an average holding period of three, four, five plus years. We're really looking for companies with a long duration of growth. And so, in that in this context, people get excited about short term developments, chasing fear, messing fear of missing out. Uh, but you know, when you had a pullback like this, you have the opportunity to buy for the longer term in durable growth companies. And over the longer term view, I think this is certainly a buying opportunity. Chris, if it is a buying opportunity, I mean, where do you think we should be putting new capital to work here? Because we've been talking about these these rate jitters and what's happening there. It seems like uh, that could definitely come back pretty quickly if we see the 10-year rise again. So, I mean, when you're looking at it, relative risk reward between some of these cyclical names that we've been watching and tech, uh, what are you liking right now? Yeah, I think it's, uh, when you think about duration, one of the areas I wanna highlight is semiconductors, which is interesting because, you know, typically this is an area considered to be more cyclical. Um, and certainly there, so you have some cyclical drivers here, and we know about the shortage and auto semis and so on. Uh, but there's an opportunity here to benefit from a longer term trend, which is designing custom chips. Uh, you know, and that's really happening for two main reasons. It's becoming harder and harder to produce chips at scale at smaller and smaller transistor sizes. Um, in addition to artificial intelligence uh, algorithms, investing in you know basically mining data to come up with insights. Uh, and those two trends are really what's powering a company like Apple to decide to develop their own chip, the M1 that they you know the CPU that they launched at the end of last year. Um, and this has just been a continuation of investment by what they call system companies, not the merchant silicon company like a Qualcomm, but Apple, Microsoft investing in their own artificial intelligence chips and so on. That customization presents an opportunity for a software business called Synopsys that is a leader in electronic design automation software, which essentially is a fancy word for saying software tools to help design chips. Uh, and it's only becoming harder. So that increased complexity, Synopsys is a company that should benefit from it. So it gives you the best of both worlds, an exposure to semiconductor spending and R&D that can be cyclical, but yet a longer term durable trend. Chris, we're expecting the House to pass that $1.9 trillion COVID relief package this week with the president signing it certainly would provide significant relief uh, to millions of Americans. How much of that has already been baked in though, you think to the market, or could we potentially see a move higher on the back of the president signing it? Yeah, I think you always have to be careful wondering what's priced in and something like this. I think the market has a tendency to look at the near term effects, but not the longer term effects. Um, and so when it comes to something for infrastructure, when you're getting back to your opening comment about, you know, is the sell off in tech done? I think you've been having this rotation where companies that have been languishing because of the lack of infrastructure spending and some of the other things in this bill, um, you know, there's there's now these companies there have higher growth prospects, right? So tech in particular stood out last year for being durable in a very uncertain environment, sustaining growth, and people gravitated toward it that was worth a premium. As this starts to unfold, you can see that premium that that premium warranted for technology shares changing a bit as people appreciate the fact that some of these less expensive looking stocks have got greater growth prospects in the short term. The question becomes, you know, what really has that duration on the longer term? And technology still has those durable trends, whether it's artificial intelligence, data, and so forth, software as a service. Those still are in play. You know, with the pandemic set in motion, as far as automation and digitalization of processes. That will continue, and that's just a way of having more mm -hmm. efficiency, um, which maybe will serve. Everyone talks about interest rates, that may serve as a, a tempering effect on interest rates going forward. Some good takeaways there, Chris Mack, portfolio manager at Harding Lovner's Global Equity Fund. It's good to talk to you today.